Hi everybody, Mike from the Digital Media Lab. We're going to continue making our composite image inside of Adobe Photoshop. Let's get started. I'm going to go up to File Open and we're going to open up this JGM 1350 flower image. I'll select Open. All right, now I, with the image that I see here, I see a lot of contrast between the thing that I want to have selected and its background. So let's take one of our um, automated selection tools, which is the quick selection tool. You can get to it by with the hotkey of W. This tool, uh, let me go ahead and reset this tool to make sure that I have, yeah, there we go. This tool works pretty much like a brush, and as you brush in, it's going to automatically make a selection based on the visibility of the contrast here. So it's gonna do, it's gonna really knock out this job. But before we begin, one of the options in this tool is this auto enhance checkbox. Now, I don't know why this is not checked on by default, but just remember to always turn that on. It will never hurt your selections. So always check that checkbox on. I don't have any idea as to why it is unchecked by default. It just is. So just always check that. All right. So if on my image, let's get started. I just, again, I just use it like a brush. Um, I can increase the size of this brush with my bracket keys, um, just like any regular old brush. And as I brush in, it's going to automatically select the parts that I want. Pretty simple. It's an automated selection tool. Now this is an example of when this tool works really, really well. So I'll go ahead and click the add a layer mask icon and we can, let's go ahead and just double check our selection. It, it looks pretty good on the surface, but if I just kind of add a solid color adjustment layer just so we can inspect it, that's looking pretty darn clean. It really knocked this image out pretty good. I'll go ahead and just delete that because we're not going to need it. I was just there to kind of take a look at it. You want to kind of inspect your work as well when uh, that's a good way of inspecting your work. Anyway, let's move on to our next image, and I have a suspicion that this next image may not work so well. So we'll go to File, Open, and let's select our camera. And I'll go ahead and select Open, and I'm going to grab my Quick Selection tool once again, and let's, I'm gonna use my bracket keys to shrink down, because I don't want it, I, if my brush is too big, it's going to end up trying to grab all of this, and I don't want that, so I'll just undo that right quick. Control Z. So I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller using my bracket keys. So I'm using close bracket. And then I'm going to start creating my selection. And it grabs a bunch of content here. And if you just kind of follow the edge of your document, we can see here that it creates a, oh, I'm going to grab that too in there. So this tool actually is pretty intuitive. If you, it automatically will go into add mode up here at the top. It will automatically go into add mode once you have an existing selection. So this area in here that it didn't grab, I just use the alt key in my mouse wheel, by the way, to zoom in. This little area here in the middle that it didn't grab, if I just kind of click and drag over there, it adds to my selection. But, oh my gosh, we can see here that there is a lot of problems. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to kind of go in this in more detail. Again, it sees differences in terms of contrast and things that are closer to the background, especially these highlight areas, are very similar to my background. So it can't tell the difference. So we're gonna to have to go in and manually fix some of these problems. And with some of these options, I can kind of go in here and try to add my selection in. It's not really going to grab everything, but we can give it a shot. It should grab that okay. Now in, in instances, and this is very, very common with this tool, is that it tends to be very much a, um, you tend to kind of over-select and then deselect and then over-select and deselect. Let me show you what I mean. If I hold down my Alt key, you'll notice, so Alt or Option on Mac, if I hold down my Alt key, you'll notice that it'll go to Subtract Selection, and I can subtract this area of my selection down like that. So that's how that's going to work, and I can kind of like narrow it down. Now it tends to, okay, so it tended, it went a little bit too far that time, and now I need it to go back a little bit. So very common for you to have to kind of add, subtract, add. I'll go ahead and subtract inside of here. 
hold down the spacebar key so that I can kind of maneuver around my document a little bit. You know what, I can make my brush a lot bigger here, so I'll do that with the uh, bracket keys. If I hold down Alt, Now, there may be some corners in here. Let's see if it can really knock it out. It may have trouble detecting where the edge of the border in there. Let's leave those things for now. There's some tools in here we can focus on a little bit later. Now, a lot, some of these objects on the camera, like this, I don't know what quite this is right now, but some kind of button or doodad on the side of the camera, do I need them in order for my selection to look realistic? That's kind of a question that you should always answer. Now, I don't think so in this one, especially considering that if we kind of go back to our original image, I really just kind of want a small camera sitting on its side. So if uh, with that in mind, I really don't need that much detail in this. I kind of just need it to look like a camera. Likewise, I don't need, so there's two little buttons here that it's sitting on. I don't really need those. Now, one of the things that it did was it picked up the shadow of the object that it's sitting on. Now, sometimes you wanna keep that shadow in there, um, but in our case, we do not. So I wanna go ahead and deselect that and make sure it subtracts that out from my selection. All right, and I had to click there again. All right, let's continue around our document. It looks like it nailed that pretty good. Uh, and then we see up here that it's, yeah, it's having a little bit of trouble. All right, so whenever you have very uh, angular objects like this, the lasso tools become, let me reset my tools right here to make sure I set them back to default. The lasso tools tend to be really, really powerful in uh, kind of manipulating your selections. You never really make a, when you have selections like this that have a little bit of complications, you end up using multiple selection tools to kind of grab everything. Now the lasso tool is great for just little, little quick, um, Let's see if there's any. There's not really any in here in this image. We'll look at another section where it'll be more relevant later on. But in this case, uh, it, it's not really necessary. The uh, polygonal lasso tool is really what's going to be really effective here. And the polygonal lasso tool works pretty much like the pen tool does, except that there are no smooth points, right? It's just corner points. So each time I click here, so I'm just going to subtract from my selection to kind of give myself a nice edge here. So watch what I do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold down the Alt key to subtract, and we notice that it goes up to the Alt. So if I click here and I click here, I'm going to create a selection, and each time I click, it creates a box. And then when I, when I want it to close out of that selection, I double click. All right, let's go ahead and try that with adding to my selection. So if I click here once, and then I click down here because I just want a straight line. Now inside of my selection doesn't really matter. As long as I just kind of click somewhere in here, I can finish off my selection. And then I want my uh, selection to just kind of autocomplete. So I'll double click and you'll notice that it'll automatically uh, select that out. So we can zoom in here and we can grab this part here. Double clicking to finish that off and we can tighten up our selection and make sure we have nice cornered objects. This, this tool works absolutely fantastic on um, man-made objects, so things that are very rectangular. Obviously, if something is uh, more organic, uh, this tool isn't going to work as well. So I'm just gonna kind of go through my image and uh, smooth out some of these problems. I don't necessarily have to smooth out all of these problems as there are some tools later on that I'll show you that will help with that, but the more I get this, the better my selection is going to look. And depending on what you're selecting, uh, you're going to need to decide what extent you would like to go with this as, or how accurate you want things to look. But as you can see here, this is going to get pretty darn fast pretty quickly. Just tightening that up here and there. Um, you know what? I could probably deal without that probably little object right there, so let's just subtract it out. There we go. Let's uh, tighten up this corner. Straighten out this line. Straighten out this line. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, I think it's, it's important not to zoom in too closely to your documents. Again, this is going to be a pretty small object in, in the final scheme of things, so spending way too much time on this is probably a little bit more than is required. So I'm just going to 
kind of select at the bottom here. Now your selection on your screen may look a little bit different from mine. Sometimes this tool does not work precisely every single time. It doesn't work exactly the same way every single time. I'm pretty satisfied with the selection that I have, so I'll go ahead and convert it to a layer mask. And there we go, that object is dropped out. I, once again, let's check ourselves with a solid color adjustment layer. I'll make it nice and red, and we'll drag it to the bottom there so that I can see my selection. If you find that you have anything in here that you'd like to tighten up, there are, you can still go into the mask, right? So make sure, so one kind of quick important note is that if you can see this little border that's around the uh, thumbnail layer, that means that the layer itself is selected and then now the layer mask is selected. So I can kind of go around here and I can adjust my selection. Now it's not going to work, or excuse me, I can adjust my mask. It's going to work a little bit differently from before in that I need to create a selection, so like this, and then I need to right click it and select fill. And if I want to, uh, in this case, if I want to hide this little part of the selection, I need to select black like that. And if I press Control D to deselect, we can see here that we can remove anything here. The beauty of working with masks is that it is always, always editable. No matter what the problem is, you can go in here and fix it. There really is no reason to go back and undo. Now, again, I don't, you know, there's a little bit of a problem down here. Yes, I could spend some time fixing it, but at the end of the day, you know what? This is going to be good enough. So don't spend a lot of time on an object if it's going to be kind of small and you just need it again. You just need it to look realistic. That's all you really want it to do at the end of the day. I'll go ahead and delete that color fill layer by clicking and dragging it to the trash can at the bottom of the layers panel. And there we have it. We have our selection. All right. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at a much more difficult selection, and that is the clouds.